Enjoy, bro. Let's get into the education here. So out there, if your team tackle one thing I was talking about this morning, we're thinking about, okay, what could we highlight today that would make a lot of sense from a, you know, just a strategy perspective, something that uh, we know that everybody could, you know, get some value out of learning about and all that kind of stuff. And one of the best things that's been happening in the market this year for traders who know how to take advantage of it is neutrality. Okay. And there is a vertical credit spread that we teach in our tackle trading playbook over on tackletrading.com. I'll show you where to find all this information here in just a minute called the bear call spread. It is a classic spread. It's a vertical spread where you sell a call option, you buy a call option. Now I'm going to teach you the bear call spread just from a theory perspective for a minute. Then we're going to got a couple of examples within a trading system that we use on the Russell 2000, where we're going to dig into some of the detail about how to use bear call spreads potentially in your trading. Uh, bear call spread is fairly straightforward. You know, once you learn options mechanics, and obviously we'd recommend that you go through the options 101 course, of course, if you don't know about expiration dates and deltas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the definition of a bear call spread is where you sell one call option. You then buy one call option in the same expiration month, okay? So you have one sold contract and one purchased contract. That's what makes it a vertical. The one you sell has to be worth more money because <clears throat> the net value of a bear call spread is a credit spread. In fact, in the chat, if you can just type in credit spread, that is often what they're referred to as a type of strategy in the marketplace. So we sell a call option, buy a different call option in the same expiration month, just with different deltas. It is a bearish cash flow strategy. Now, implied volatility falling helps the trade. I'm not going to get into that too much here today because it's naturally mitigated within the vertical anyway. The basis of the strategy is two things. You have to believe that the level you sell is far enough above you that the price is not going to exceed it. You want to be at a low delta when you're doing that. And by doing that, by creating those characteristics in, in your strategy, what you're doing is you're creating a cash flow opportunity where you get to keep the money you sold for a credit if the trade works itself out. And I'll show you a couple of examples here in just a second. So when you're spreading options, it does require margin. You have to have an options account. You have to have access to generally what most brokers call level two options trading. And if you're brand new in the options market, you don't know much about any of those processes, that's okay. You're in the right place because that's what we do is we teach options how to go, our option traders how to go from brand new, never doing anything to where you actually are applying techniques in the market over time. So this is the definition of a bear call spread. Couple of things that we want to see behind it, okay? Technical analysis. The chart should be neutral or bearish. You can absolutely play these on neutral charts. The Russell 2000 has been neutral for nine months in a row. It has had wonderful opportunities to trade bear call spreads most of the year, okay? So it needs to be neutral, which is a zero bias, or it needs to be bearish, which is a minus two bias, up to that. The option Greeks, okay? It's a theta strategy. In fact, in the chat, one of my team tackle members, if you can put in theta strategy. In our playbook design, what we do at Tackle Trading is we lump every technique or, or into a categorization. And our categorizations are based on the options Greeks. Delta for directional strategies, theta for time-based strategies or cash flow strategies. And then vega would be volatility strategies which there's a lot of appropriate techniques in volatility right now in earnings season. But this one's a theta strategy. In the playbook, a couple things to be aware of. Number one, check the earnings date in the news. Now, we're going to do one today just as a hypothetical example on an index. There's no earnings on an index. You know, One of the things I love about the Russell 2000 trading system is it's not on individual companies. So like Delta Airlines or you know, JP Morgan today wouldn't have to worry about the earnings gap or whatever it might, might happen with the technique. Check the earnings and the news on every company you ever trade if you're trading individual companies. Never trade anything you haven't practiced before. These are some pretty standard bits of advice for any trader out there. Get into a virtual environment, get into a back testing environment, join a trading lab with Coach Gino or Greg or something like that at Tackle Trading and learn how to practice them. Until you've done something 10 times, 15 times, 
20 times, 25 times, 50 times, whatever it might be, you've got to have experience in anything in life and <clears throat> learning how to en enter, learning how to manage, learning how to exit. Those are important tactics for any new cash flow trader, no question about it. So make sure that you've practiced it and build your rules out specifically. And what I would recommend, just use the rules that we build at Tackle Trading. Those are based on decades of experience and back-tested rules and all that kind of stuff. Here's how you build the bear call spread, okay? Number one, you have a delta rule. We want low deltas because a low delta indicates a high probability of success. Now, the core rule is that it has to be less than a 25 delta on the short call that you sell. It also needs to be above resistance. You don't want to sell a bear call spread in the middle of a price range. You don't want to sell your short strike price below the resistance point because resistance from a technical perspective is what is going to help you with the charting. You get above that resistance. You feel like you've got the cushion. You know where your stop out point is. You know where to make a management decision when there's clarity on the resistance. So you want to go above that resistance. Now, for me, when I sell credit spreads, by the way, guys, I'll go as low of a delta as I can where I still get good credit, okay? Now, if I can do a 20 delta and I feel very great about it and I get a big fat credit, yeah, sure, I'm gonna go with that. But if I can get a 10 delta or a seven delta or a five delta and still feel like I'm getting compensated for my risk and my margin, and I can build some cash flow around it, I'm gonna go a little bit lower delta as well. Now, <clears throat> when I'm building bear call spreads, I like to have five point spreads or bigger, it depends on the size of the stock. We'll do an example here on the Russell 2000. Your theta rule. When you're building a strategy out, the theta rule is the time tell expiration rule. All right. Now, <clears throat> in general, when we're doing credit spreads, we want to be less than six, 60 days of time, 60, 65 days, and then lower. Uh, the Russell 2000 system actually sells like 65 days, but you can sell 30 days on these credit spreads, by the way. I really like the sweet spot when I'm doing verticals between 30 and 45 days personally. That's where that four to six weeks of time comes in. Okay. So when you're going into the option chain, you're selecting an expiration date, go four to six weeks out. You can go up to 60 days out, but make sure you're sticking within those windows of time decay. Last one, Vega rule. Volatility falling helps it. It is not mandatory that you have a certain implied volatility relationship. This one is more nuanced and for advanced traders that if you get it, it gives you a little bit more of an edge. So you have a little higher probability and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to base this decision just on volatility alone. Position size has to be according to risk level. In any credit spread, you can lose what you put in on margin. So you got to understand that. Uh, and you got to keep those numbers relatively low relative to your account size, because one of the, the key things in trading and <clears throat> really just let me I got a little something in my throat. Apologize about that. I haven't declared it. But uh, <clears throat> one second. One of the key things in trading on position sizing, make sure that any decision you make in the market is just one decision. You know, we're going to find beautiful breakouts. We're going to find beautiful breakdowns. We're going to find delta opportunities and theta opportunities and everything in between. If you're an active trader at the end of the year, how many trades do you think you will have made? Dozens, hundreds, some of you, maybe even thousands, depending on what, what type of trading that you do. You can't ever, or you should not ever, I should say, you should not ever put yourself in a position to where one trade is oversized so much that it puts too much risk on your portfolio. So position sizing is key. And that's something that you should work on with your coaches. If you're in one-on-one -on -one coaching or in the labs or whatever it might be, make sure your position size rules are detailed. And then for me, my ROI target, I use the tackle theta spreadsheet to build those ROI targets. I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. We're looking for 70% ROID or higher for a bear call spread. Now, this is the risk graph of what it looks like visually once you build it into your analyze tab. What I wanna do next actually is go right in and build one of these for you so you get an example of what I'm thinking about here today. Now, by the way, if you're out there and you're watching this right now and I'm finally got the chat back up, 
If you are learning, just type in the word learning in the chat and let's keep the energy up. I'm looking at all this uh, content coming in. I appreciate you guys' energy out there. A uh, couple things on the bear call. Here's the Russell 2000. Matt has been breaking the technical analysis down day by day by day for years here on the Halftime Show. If you are a veteran of our community, you come here every day, you know this is a neutral range for a very long time. Now, if I go back to the weekly chart, okay, I can identify a couple of different things here. You know, I'm going to come down to a drawing tool. Look at the consistency of the support level down here. This zone. Every time these weekly candles dip in between 2100 and 2150 or so, we're finding some support throughout the entirety of the course of the year. Look at the consistency around the resistance that has been pushing it down. Now, there's two levels that are grabbing my attention right now, 2300 and then much deeper at 2360 or even up to 2400. 2300 is the next pivot point that you would have to pay attention to if you were a trader. Because if you put the bear call on, what you're wanting to have happen is for it to stay below these resistance levels, right? It's a neutral cash flow strategy or bearish. We want one of the two things. Now, the rut, the, the whole point here, by the way, and one of the assumptions that I made when I decided to do a bear call spread here today is that you already have the bull put on on this strategy. Traders who trade the Russell 2000 iron condor system, and just type in the chat, type in cash flow condors for me if you can. Just type in cash flow condors. Okay. It's a system that we use at Tackle Trading. It's a very, very popular system for the veterans in our community. People who've been here in Tackle Trading for a long time might have been trading those for years and years and years and years. Coach Tyler was the architect of the system. I'll talk a little bit more about it in just a second. In the cash flow condor system, you already have, and I wish I had the Epic pen now, you already have a bull put on, so you are expecting support to hold, okay? Many traders, though, don't have the bear call on. And as the market has kind of moved into neutrality the last month, you know, as we've had a pullback, as the Russell has been neutral for a long time, adding the bear call on can increase your overall net cash flow, all right? So that's why we're teaching the bear call spread. 2300, 2360, and then even deeper for cushion is what I'd be looking for. So if I want to go into the option chain and actually build this out, and then I'm going to open up the analyze tab in Thinkorswim. I use Thinkorswim when I trade options. Uh, I then will go into a different expiration date. Now for this one, I'm going to build the 36-day option out. Let me adjust my strike prices, put in 60 here or so. And just so that you guys can see it visually, I'm going to build a bull put side of this as well, maybe down here at 2000, something like that, right there on that level. Okay. Now here's my Delta. That is a bull put spread. Now I'm teaching bear call spreads. Assume you already had this one on. Now, bull put spread on its own is bullish. You want the stock to go up, the index to go up, or whatever it might be. By adding a bear call spread on the other side, we are turning it into a neutral strategy, okay? So in the chat, somebody type this in for me. Put in bull put spread plus bear call spread equals neutral cash flow. Bull put spread plus bear call spread equals neutral cash flow. So if I'm going in to do that, there's a couple of different things I'm going to start with. My eyes instantly go to these delta numbers. You want to set up your option chain so that you can find delta very quickly. I'm going to give you guys some advice out there if you're new, if you're intermediate, or if you're a veteran, all the way in between. Use option Greeks in your trading. Use Delta specifically to help you understand strike price probability, okay? Cushion, all of those kind of things. It's such a critical concept is the Delta concept. So I'm going to build Delta in here and I'm going to go directly down. First thing my eyes are going to do is find that one right there. Now, why? Well, when I was going through the little PowerPoint slides a minute ago, what I was showing you is the number one rule we had on the Delta rule is it has to be 25 or lower. 
So because my rules tell me I have to be at that location or lower, I just mark it. I mentally identify it from a level perspective. That delta is at 2330, okay? So if I build the 2330, 2340 bear call spread, you'll notice a couple of characteristics. Here's my trade. A 25 delta means I have a 75% probability of that option expiring worthless 36 days from now when it expires, all right? If it does happen, I get to keep this credit right here. Now, the aggressive delta gives me a credit of $2.80. That's a big credit. $2.80, let's look at the uh, order form. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's got 25 contracts as the default. Hold on, let me change that to one. Easier to always do the math just on one, whatever you're going to do. All right, uh, confirm and send. So here would, what, what would be happening here if I put this trade on? A 275 credit, 275 potential in max profit against 725 in potential max loss. If you add those two things up, you'll notice it's $1,000 total. Because a 10-point spread with one contract on the Russell 2000 is a 1000 bucks. Somebody put that in the chat for me. I appreciate the way you guys are typing in there. It helps me make sure you're getting the stuff I want you to get. Put in one contract, 10-point spread equals $1,000 total. Whatever your reward is versus whatever your margin is, that's what it's going to total up to on this particular technique. Okay? I don't like this spread. I'm going to tell you why I don't like this spread. 2330 on the Russell 2000, it puts me in the middle of a technical location that does not represent what I'm trying to do with it. I wouldn't have a problem if somebody said they wanted to play something aggressively neutral, get a real big fat credit, go with the delta that is higher if they understood the risk and the management. But if it breaks above this pivot, I don't want to have to micromanage this trade. I trade credit spreads because kind of like Coach Emily talked about yesterday when she was doing her, uh, you know, Queen's Court analysis, I want this particular trade in my account to kind of be a lazy cash flow trade. I don't want to have to micromanage it. I don't want to have to stare at every intraday tick on it. What I want to do is I want to come way up here somewhere, 2400, 2420, something like that, and actually give me a little bit more cushion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the option chain. I'm going to uncheck the aggressive 25 delta. I'm going to go back into a simulation. And then we're going to keep moving down the option chain. Now, here's a lesson. The lower the delta, the bigger the cushion you have, and the higher the probability you have inherent in the trade. So if I come down here, I'm going to start with that 10 delta right there. That corresponds to me right at $2,400. And I'm going to build a 2,400 by 2,410 credit spread. Now, the math here would be 90 cents credit. And again, it defaulted me at that 25. Let me change that. Put one in here. Okay. It would be $90 credit. So the most you can make is 90 bucks on $910 in margin. So you have to have 910 to put the trade on, all right? But with the delta where it is, using the 2400 strike, I have a 10 delta, which infers to me mathematically, I have a 90% probability of the trade expiring worthless and me capturing the credit, okay? Now, a lot of the details of how probability works and how delta works, you're gonna have to get in some courses for that kind of stuff. You know, let's just focus on the actual execution of what I'm talking about here. So if I go back into the rut and look at the chart, adding the neutral trade puts me up here and remove that, remove that. I need that Epic pen now. Uh, it puts me right here at 2,400. So by going to the lower delta, I then have the cushion between here and here. You'll remember the premise that we started with by adding the bear call side of it is because I wanted to balance out the assumption that a Condor trader already had the bull put on. The bull put in this example is at 2000, which would be here, okay? 
So now what I've done is I've taken a trade, adding one side of it, converted it to neutral, increased my overall cash flow expectation, given myself some cushion to operate in. And one of the things I really like about this guy is because I'm a bullish trader. You know, I really am. Uh, people, and there are times I've been called Timmy the Bear. There have been moments I've been very, very bearish. And there's no doubt about it, like any other trader would be as market conditions change. But my net bias in the market over the long term is always going to be to the upside. It's always going to be bullish in that regard. In these markets that have moved neutrality, though, what I can do is I can add bear call spreads on to existing positions to neutralize them, to balance my portfolio, to put me into a bigger cash flow expectation, all of that kind of stuff. So the lesson here today, and hopefully you guys got some value out of it, is around the bear call spread and adding it to the analysis. Now, one thing I also did when I was preparing this is I decided to go in and compare these two different things using a tool we call the Tackle Theta Spreadsheet. Now, I'd recommend strongly you learn how to use this tool. And let me change some of the stuff. 25 Delta, 2320, 2330. 275 against 925. All the math that I just did and kind of just threw out there in the cosmos as I was explaining it, you can actually build those numbers in here and better understand the expectation, your return on investment potential, your cushion, your old, where you should set an alert to know when things are getting out of hand that you need to be paying attention to, and so on and so forth. The first line here, and I'm going to highlight the whole thing all the way to that point right there. The line I just highlighted in yellow was the more aggressive trade I built first. The second line here is the more conservative trade I built second. And if you understand the conservative nature of it, there's a couple of things that stand out to me. That being a lower delta number, 10, gives me a higher probability. See this buffer right here? Very important to me that I get enough cushion in my trade to feel like I can manage it comfortably, not have to get too worked up about it and stare at it 24 hours a day. So I like the lower delta with the standard ATR buffer and simply put, yes, I do make less money on the lower delta, but I still feel comfortable with an 8.2% standardized ROI. I still feel very comfortable with a 9.9% 36-day ROI, and I feel confident in the cushion behind it, the probability behind it, and this is the way that option trades work.